So what is a tea shop? Well, it actually has a name, and I can't remember the actual name. <clears throat> but basically what it is, is it's a, a, um, it's a package type. So this is a 1.0 board. And we're going to tea shop this board here just a minute. I already did a 1.1 last night, and it went successful. So if I can get this thing to focus, I don't know if I can or not. So this chip right here, this is a Hynix chip, this is a TSOP chip. It has to do with the form factor of it, as it's not really like any of the other chips. <clears throat> but uh, this chip actually contains the Xbox BIOS. And this chip is electrically erasable, so what they call it, an EEPROM or whatever. It could be erased electrically and then reflashed. Now, on these boards, this is a uh, this is a one meg version because it's on a uh, Xbox 1.0. Uh, what did I say? Two point no one point two and up to one point five. They have two hundred and fifty six k versions of these chips on here, and there's different versions. There's a ST, which is what was in the 1.1. There's this Hynix brand here. There's a or Henix, I don't exactly know how they pronounce it. Uh, there's also Windbond, which requires uh, a different flashing utility to do the flash. And then there's also the Sharp version of these chips. Um, you remember Sharp, they uh, made the old crappy televisions back in the day. The Sharp chips require a little bit more effort, but uh, this chip as it stands right now cannot be flashed. The electrical connections uh, from the factory are not jumpered. That way they write the Xbox BIOS to the chip and it's just there. And there's no way to change it without uh, soldering some points. So this may be hard to get but uh, you'll see R7D3. Let's see if I get my camera to focus. R7D3. There's two little solder balls right next to it. You have to jumper those. So basically what you do is put a little rosin on them. Put a little ball of solder on the uh, iron. Make sure to use a 15 watt iron. Anything more you'll pretty much torch the board. So Now I, will, I do use higher watt iron. My 40 watt like when I took the clock cap out over here because you need it to get the old solder loose but here all we're doing is adding solder so 15 watt iron which here's my 15 watt iron <clears throat> is uh, all you need for this you put a little rosin on there heat it up put a little ball of solder on the end of the uh, soldering iron and just dab it it may take you about two or three maybe four dabs but what will happen is eventually you'll dab it enough and then it'll bridge it will bridge those connectors and then you have to go over to the back side of the board and then you probably won't be able to see it here let's see I gotta find it in my camera they got this piece of protective ground tape here but uh right there and that number is not the correct number the number you need is actually under here it's a R7 It's R7, R3, and it's those two little pins right there next to the number four. I don't know if this will come out in the video or not, but you connect those pins as well. And once you do that, the chip is electrically, you've created the electrical circuit back, which will allow uh, the flashing utility to erase the EEPROM and then you can take the executor BIOS which is what's used on Xbox mod chips and matter of fact your mod chips would connect on these pins here these big solder ball pins some Xboxes these are soldered in some Xboxes these are empty holes and you would put the pin in put the pin outs in and then connect the uh, connect the uh, mod chip to here 
but doing this you don't have to have a mod chip you're going to take that executor BIOS and you're going to flash it into the original Xbox BIOS chip and then once that's done you have a permanently forever uh, modded Xbox and then you can put whatever hard drive you want in it they don't have to support locking or unlocking uh, you can even get a SATA adapter and do a SATA IDE conversion on it and put like a thick of seen where you can put as high as two terabyte drives in these I'm not, you'd have to have a hell of a lot of games to justify a two terabyte <laughs> drive in one but uh... we're going to go ahead and solder these connections up here in just a second, I've got to heat the iron up you can see this, uh, this board has the 4034 BIOS um, we're going to use the Executor 50, I can't remember, it's a 5034 or something like that. It's one of the last biases they made for the Executor 2 chip. And then we'll put it back together. Alright, so we just got done doing the uh, T-SOP solder. As you can see right here, R7D3. camera will ever focus. Anyway right here you'll see a little blob of solder which bridges those connections. And then over here on the back over here on the back right there by the four stick a little alcohol residue left or clean the rosin back off but right here by the four you'll see uh, bridge joints there for R7 R3 so now the chip is electrically uh, programmable so now we can erase it and put an executor BIOS on it and we should be good to go. Alright, I gotta power my soldering iron down and put the board back in the Xbox and put all the hardware back in it. And we should be good to go to program it.